I've got a question for you. Do you think it matters the order in which we apply our photo editing tools in Luminar Neo to the end result? Well, I think it might actually surprise you. It certainly surprised me. So stick around in this video because we'll explore that concept. And based on what we find out, I've got some recommendations on how we can apply that knowledge to improving our photo edits. Now, just to be clear, I am not talking about whether or not we should apply Develop Raw as a first stage of our photo edit, because that goes without saying, absolutely 100% Develop Raw is the first step because we want our photo to be accurately developed before we do any creative editing to that. So I'm talking about getting the exposure right, the contrast right, the white balance right. That should 100% be our first step. But beyond that, does the order in which we apply those tools affect the result? Let's take a look. Okay, let's work on this high contrast photo, which currently has no develop tools applied. I'm not gonna use develop raw for this one. I'm just gonna jump straight into enhance AI and I'm gonna apply that to the maximum with 100%. And now I'm gonna apply a second tool, structure AI. And again, I'm gonna be way over the top, really obnoxious with my edit and apply 100% of that effect. So let's toggle our before and our after. So that's our current effect and the order that we have those applied, as you can see, Enhance AI is the bottom of the stack and Structure AI is on the top. Now let's do a comparison using those same tools, but flip them around. So what I'm gonna do is actually duplicate that layer. I'm going to come into the Edit Stack and I'm just gonna reset these so that we can apply them in the opposite order. So this time we're gonna start with Structure AI bump that to 100 again, obviously keeping those settings the same so we can do a fair comparison. And now I'm gonna bump Accent AI to 100 as well. Now at first glance, you probably think these look exactly the same. However, there are differences. Let's have a look. I'm gonna hide this layer and we can see the underlying layer where we applied Accent AI and then Structure. And now let's show the layer where we applied them in the opposite order. So this version has Structure AI and then Enhance AI. And then this version is Enhance AI followed by Structure AI. So surprisingly, the result is different just with two tools reversed, but identical settings. So what is going on? Well, we will come to that. But first, I want to throw one more tool into the mix just so we can really get a sense of how the result can differ if we change the order of the tools. So let's start in the same way by applying Enhance AI because that was doing a pretty good recovery job on this photo as a whole. And now we'll apply Structure AI as well. Do you know what? Let's not go as heavy handed this time. Let's put this somewhere around 75 just for a slightly improved version. And now I'm going to add a vignette because let's say I really want to draw people's attention to the center of the frame. And again, let's be really over the top with this. Drop it down to minus 100 just so we really get a feel for what's going on here. I'm gonna bring the feathering all the way up to 100 as well. So we've darkened the edges of the frame, drawn people's attention to the center of the frame, and let's say that's our edit. Again, just to reiterate, you would never want to edit in this kind of way. The idea is we're magnifying the intensity of these effects so that we can more clearly see the result. Okay, I've duplicated the layer. This time what we're gonna do is put the same tools on with the same settings. So there's the vignette. This time we are reversing the order. So we had structure set at 75 and we had enhance AI, accent AI all the way to 100. I don't even need to hide this layer for you to see that we have got some serious problems. But as I show and hide that layer, it's very obvious that we've got a different result going on here. So I'm hiding the version where we applied the vignette first and now I'm showing that version where the vignette was applied first. And unfortunately, the edges of our frame have become destroyed. As I zoom into this corner, you can see we've got a lot of color banding and then we drop off to pure black. This file has been absolutely destroyed. In these corners, I now have no information whatsoever to work with. So let's say we'd got to this point of our edit and we suddenly realized, you know what, these shadows are way too dark. Let me boost those up. And we jumped into the develop tool so we could grab the shadows and then push these up. You can see if I boost those up, there is absolutely zero recovery going on around those edges. Let's grab the exposure slider and bring that up. Let's keep going. Come on, come on, come back to me shadows. No, not a chance. They have gone. It is over for those shadows. So hopefully you can clearly see from this example 
absolutely the order in which we apply our photo edits will affect the final result. But what does that mean for us in terms of our real world editing? Well, to get our heads around what's going on here, we need to understand the concept of destructive versus non-destructive editing. When we're editing a raw file and we're using raw editing tools only, and we never leave a raw editing workflow, that is a non-destructive way of retouching, editing our photos, because the software always has that raw data to refer back to. Luminar Neo works in a slightly different way. Yes, we have the develop raw tool, which allows us to tap into all of that amazing, rich raw data. So that's why, as I said earlier, it's essential that the number one thing we do is work in develop raw to make sure that we have a correctly exposed photo, that we have detail in our highlights, in our shadows, and we have a correct contrast and white balance at that point. We then step away out of that raw develop module and we can move into Luminar Neo's more creative tools. At this point, the photo information has been flattened and any subsequent tools that we apply to our photo are working on a pixel level. They're not tapping into that raw data anymore. And so if you veer too far from a correct dynamic exposure and you overexpose your highlights with any tool or you darken down the shadows with any tool, then the next tool that you apply isn't gonna be able to access that lovely rich raw data, it's just not there anymore. That's why when I'm trying to recover the shadows where I've crushed down the corners of this photo, there's just no information for that tool to tap into. So we really need to be mindful of that when we're performing our edits. Let me show you a couple of other examples where I flip the order of the tools around and then I'll give you some practical advice that you can apply to your own photo editing. Okay, let's switch out of the largest thumbnail mode and go to just large. That will give us three photos next to each other. I have three identical copies of the same photo. This is my raw photo. And then we have two edits that follow, which use exactly the same tools, but in a different order. Like look at the difference between these two. And I'll just jump to the edit tab. And within that, go to edits so that you can clearly see what I've done. I've just applied an enhance AI, toning, mystical, and a develop adjustment. And now if I come back to the catalog and we switch to this option, you're gonna see that I have exactly the same tools applied with the same settings, and you'll have to trust me on this, but the opposite way around. Uh, the only difference is I use develop raw as a starting point on this one. And obviously because I had to flip the order when I applied that effect on this one, it's no longer develop raw, it has to just be a develop tool because as I said, we can no longer access that raw data once we've left that initial stage of our editing. So the tools and the settings are identical between these two photos. The only thing that's changed is the order. We've already looked at this example here. Now what about this next one? The edit on this photo is the one that actually really surprised me. So this was the edit that I was a little over the top with, admittedly, but at the same time, I wanted to be respectful of the highlights in the clouds that you can see up here. And I also wanted to retain detail in the shadows as well. So with this particular edit, I was just a little bit more subtle with the settings. As you can see, I still went for a vignette, but we were only at minus 60 this time. I used the mystical tool just with a setting of 30, dramatic with a setting of 25. So I was building up these effects, but I was doing it with a bit more subtlety than I showed in that original example. Now, if we take a very quick side-by-side -side look just at those two photos, which I'm not gonna see unless I actually move one of my other photos to the trash. So that reorders them side-by-side. -side. And now we can flick between the two photos and as you can see, the second version where I've inverted the order of those editing tools, so again, exactly the same as what I applied to the other version. However, this time the edit isn't too dissimilar and it's not terrible. So we can get a better comparison. I'm going to export this as a TIFF that we can load as a new layer over the top of our alternative version. So I'm gonna to come to edit, click the layers plus icon and double click the layer I want to load up. And I'll push the opacity all the way to 100. And now on the top here, we see the edited version that's been done in the way I would usually approach an edit. I applied the tools in the, what I consider to be correct way. Now I'm just gonna hide this layer so that we can see the same tools applied with the same intensity, but with the order changed around. 
Now, I was actually surprised how similar it looks. But if I show the other version and we come up here and we focus just on the clouds at the top, you can see that we still have a lot of subtle detail going on with the clouds here. We can still see a little bit of the trees faintly over the waterfall. There's still a lot of detail going on. Whereas if I hide this and we see the version where I applied the tools in the incorrect way, you can see that we lost all the highlight detail in the clouds they got completely blown out. But what about the shadows? If I come down here into the rock area, it actually doesn't look too bad. I'm actually pleasantly surprised by how well rendered this is. But let's do a little comparison. Let's apply another develop tool on top of both of these layers where we're gonna boost up the shadows and we can make a comparison between how well rendered these shadows are. If I push that to 100 and we also boost the exposure, Let's set that to three so it's nice and easy to remember. So plus three, plus 100. We can see that that shadow information doesn't look good. The colors are off. There's a lot of noise being introduced. Now let's have a look at this version. So let's show the layer, very dark at the moment. And we're gonna come over to develop. I'm going to boost that up to three and I'm just typing it directly into the keyboard. And now I'm gonna grab the shadow slider and push that to 100. And as I toggle between these two, the first thing to note is that the color is markedly different. So as I show a little bit more of the frame and we toggle between the two layers, you can see that the effect really is quite different between those two layers. And that all comes down to the order in which those tools were applied. But this is the thing that surprised me the most. When I came up with the concept of this video and showing you guys just how much the photo was gonna alter depending on the order of those tools, I expected the results to be vastly different from what they are. Or more to the point, I expected the photo to fall apart a lot quicker and the highlight shadows, things like that, were gonna be unrecoverable a lot quicker in the process, particularly when I was being really heavy handed with those tools. So while it is reassuring that we can throw a lot of editing tools in Luminar Neo at our photo before it starts to degrade, I would still recommend an order of operations to try and keep the integrity of your photo as high as possible for as long as possible during the editing process. So here's my recommendation. Always start with Develop Raw and give your photo a full dynamic range, a correct contrast, and a correct white balance. At this point, keep sharpening to a minimum. If you do want to add a bit of Enhance AI or Structure AI, now's the time to do it. Next, look at the creative tools that are adding or changing your pixels, such as Sun Rays, Atmosphere AI, Twilight Enhancer, those type of tools. Then if you want to add glow tools or those that soften your photo on a global level, such as mystical, the autumn effect, or even the dramatic filter, now is the time to apply those. I recommend you keep the colors in your photo as authentic as possible for as long as possible. For this reason, if you want to desaturate or add color grading through lookup tables or toning, that should be done towards the end of the workflow. Then you can add your final contrast adjustments, a final round of sharpening, and a vignette if you want to add one. If this free information has been helpful to you, you can say thank you to me by leaving me a thumbs up. Also a comment goes a long way as well. Thanks so much for watching guys. I will see you in the next video. Bye bye for now.